Hello? How y'all doing? Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> yeah, so my name's Connor McKeown, and I'm doing my PhD on video games. <laughs> So first of all, I'd like to give a big shout out to uh, to my girlfriend who helped me write all the jokes tonight. <laughs> That's my girlfriend. <laughs> I'm doing a PhD on video games. <laughs> I don't have a girlfriend. <laughs> no, it is good though. It's good we do normal things together. <laughs> Eat food and go outside <laughs> together. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> but no, uh, people have these misconceptions about video games and about particularly what it'd be like to study video games, you know. The most common reaction that I get when I tell people that I study video games is, uh, is what I like to call the monocle drop. It's kind of a, it's like a, it's a, a backwards head jerk that suggests a combination of confusion and righteous indignation. But, uh, you know, it's a look that suggests Video games. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> How dare you besmirch the good name of the humanities? <laughs> and usually when I get this sort of reaction, I like to just say, you know, well, in his day, Shakespeare was generally regarded as mass entertainment. <laughs> If that doesn't get them, I just draw their attention towards the recent call for papers for the first annual symposium <laughs> of Kim Kardashian studies. <laughs> At which point they rightly concede that in about 50 years time, studying games will be much the same as reading Marcel Proust. <laughs> But no, the worst monocle drop that I ever got was uh, at a ferry port in Northern Ireland. And the uh, security guard, uh, he asked me what I was doing to try and break the tension. And I said, I'm doing a PhD. But I was feeling particularly ashamed about studying video games that day. <laughs> So I fudged it a wee bit and I said, I'm doing a PhD with computers. <laughs> he said to me, he said, computers, fastest computer in the world. <laughs> so I looked back at him and I said, no. <laughs> It's not. The fastest computer in the world is the Titan supercomputer in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, capable of some 20 billion billion mathematical computations a second. It's absurd to suggest that you're inside your head. It's far too big. And he said to me, he says, so, but a computer will never love. <laughs> and I said, well, of course not. It's much too fast. <laughs> It'd get over it. <laughs> but no, the other reaction that I tend to get is one that totally baffles me. It, it confuses me so much that I've not been able to give it a name, not even for the sake of an hilarious joke. <laughs> That's the belief that for some reason studying video games for a PhD would be for some reason fun. <laughs> or cool. 
I think the reason people might think this is because uh, they're thinking of fun, cool video games, you know, they're thinking of Grand Theft Auto, or Mario Kart, <laughs> or Pac-Man, <laughs> but no, the game that I'm studying right now is called Amputee. <laughs> which is a game about a man who's had his arm amputated <laughs> trying to make a cup of tea. <laughs> now, in fairness to the game, it is trying to draw attention to just how difficult it would be if you had your arm amputated to make a cup of tea. But it is nonetheless a game about making a cup of tea. <laughs> I told a friend of mine I'm studying this game and he said, he, he said, hey, I'm studying a game about making a cup of tea. That must really make you want to have a cup of tea. And he says to him, no, studying a game about making a cup of tea really makes me want to kill myself. <laughs> Or have a coffee. <laughs> but no, I think the reason that people think it could be a cool thing to do is because they think I'm studying these awesome, fun things, but the problem is I study the most boring and insipid aspect of video games, as I study video game code, which to those who know is the most backwards and least intuitive part of all video games. For instance, if you wanted to make a video game about something cool, like a chair in a room, you would first have to say, computer, I want you to make a chair. And it'd say, okay. And then you'd say, I want you to make a room. And it'd say, all right. And then you'd say, all right, but this time, I want you to put the chair in the room without it falling to infinity <laughs> until either I stop the game or the universe runs out of numbers. <laughs> I didn't say that's great, okay, I can do that. You'd say, all right, now I want you to put the chair in the room, but I don't want you to ask yourself 60 times a second, infinitely, whether or not the chair is still in the room. <laughs> It's a bit like being good friends with a chair-obsessed <laughs> junkie prone to abstract thought without the obvious benefits of human warmth <laughs> and comfort. But no, I'm 27, I've got a girlfriend paid to write a PhD about video games. And honestly, it's terrifying. Because there's no version of the world in which this isn't the happiest I could ever possibly be. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs>